What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be part three of the EcoSolaris hybrid heat pump series. We're going to be getting it up and running on solar only. I have not wired up the 240 volt side of this thing yet. It's been about a week since the install. I've played around with it a little bit, but we're going to get it up and running fully today. Uh, before we do, I just wanted to point out a couple things from the comments of the last video. Somebody noticed uh, these two have actually been um, reversed. There's a bit of a typo here. So heating mode is actually minus 15 to 32. Cooling mode is 0 to 55. So that is a typo. Uh, they are aware of it. It's going to be in the next version of that manual. Um, the other thing I wanted to comment on was the price. Somebody said, why is the price so high compared to the EG4 heat pump? This is a Canadian company on a Canadian website using Canadian dollars so if you convert that to usd it puts it within a couple hundred bucks of the eg4 it's pretty comparable the price is not that much higher so just want to clear up those couple things i'm going to take you out in the backyard show you the solar setup and we'll get started okay so out here in the yard i have four 400 watt panels wired in series meaning we add the voltage of all these panels the amps remain the same so we have about 32 volts per panel we're sitting around 135 140 volts open circuit it is a pretty cloudy day so clouds are kind of coming and going we might be dropping out here and there but we'll give it a go Okay, so here we are at the outdoor unit. As you can see, I got the line set cover kit put on since the install video. We're gonna go ahead and just do a quick voltage check on this uh, array before we plug it in. It's always a good idea to just make sure you have your polarity correct, make sure you're not exceeding the rated input voltage for the unit. So we're sitting at 140 volts DC. That's a little low. Honestly, I'd like to be up near 200, but we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. That's the beauty of these things. You just plug in your MC4s and away you go. You should have a disconnect or a fuse somewhere in the circuit. I don't have the solar finalized yet. We're going to get to that later, but here we go. Let's go inside and see if we can turn this thing on. Okay, so we're sitting around 20.5 Celsius. That's around 68, 69 Fahrenheit, I believe. So we're going to throw this thing into heat mode. I think heat mode is a little more challenging for these solar heat pumps. They use a lot more power. So we're going to get it warmed up in here first. Not that we need the heat. It's a pretty mild day, but it'll just be a good test for it. We'll get it cranked up in here and see how it does. Um, if we do get a little bit of cloud outside, I think it might struggle to run a little bit. I could use one more panel just to get the DC VOCs up a little higher. Like I said, we're sitting around 140 volts. So if we drop off too much, it could cut out, but we're going to go ahead and fire it up. We've got the remote here, turn it on. I've got it set to heat and 28 degrees Celsius fan is set to automatic. So we'll give that just a couple minutes to fire up and we'll see how it does. Okay, we are up and running. I can hear the compressor running outside. Everything sounds good, nice and quiet. I can definitely feel the heat coming out of this thing. So we're gonna take a quick look with the Hike Micro thermal camera. Looks like we are shooting out about 103, 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty good. We're only a couple minutes in. I'll throw the app up on screen here and we can have a look at the volts, watts, and amps. So far, so good. We're gonna let it run for a little while here, get the garage heated up quite a bit before we put it into AC mode and we'll see how we do. Okay guys, we've been running a little over a half hour and we're up to 27 and a half degrees in here. So definitely pumping out the heat pretty good. It did shut off on me one time. Uh, other than that, it's been running pretty solid. I think we peaked right around 730, 750 watts, something like that. Uh, so doing pretty good. I don't really want to hang out in here too much longer at 27 degrees. So I'm going to flip it over to cool. Uh, I'll just use the remote for this one. There's cool, set it down to 17. Probably gonna take a minute to switch over just like the EG4 does. They have a two or three minute changeover delay. So we'll give that just a minute to uh, get sorted out and we'll check back in. Okay, we've been running for about 15, 20 minutes in cooling now. I went inside for lunch for a couple minutes. Uh, garage is feeling pretty nice. We've got a little bit of condensation on the valves here. They are sitting at about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, so it looks like things are working pretty good. And we've come down to 24 from 27, so that was pretty quick. Uh, once again, feeling nice and cool coming out of the head unit. We are doing about 52 degrees in the supply side, so oh, there's 50. Yeah, nice and cool coming out. Once again, I'll pop the app up on screen. 
just so you can have a look. I do like this app. I like how it shows how you can see um, voltage and amperage as well as the wattage. That's something new to this app. I didn't have that on the other one. So that's a nice feature. You can keep track of uh, voltage. It's helpful for troubleshooting, stuff like that. Definitely nice and cold standing right in front of this thing. Okay, so the unit did drop out on me once more when the clouds rolled through. Uh, I didn't catch it on camera, but I was watching the app at the time, and the input voltage just got too low under load. Unit shut off, came back on a couple minutes later, but I figured I'd grab another panel and just throw it in the circuit. So we are now sitting closer to 160, 170 volts under load at 2,000 watts. So I was going to plug into my other array over here. This one sits at about 230 volts, which is a great voltage, kind of right in the middle of the recommended. Um, but we'll play around with this. It seems to be a lot happier now so we'll head back into the garage okay we're back in the garage things have been working great that extra panel is making a big difference we're sitting around 165 volts under load so everything's much happier the unit has not shut off since then running it down around 125 130 under load was definitely risking it on a cloudy day so i've got the manual popped open here a couple of you had asked about the solar specs you can go up to 4500 watts uh, 100 to 300 volts input Here's the uh, short circuit voltage, the maximum amperage you want to give this thing is 12 amps. So I know a few of you were curious on that. There's that info for you. I'll pop that up once more. Uh, like I said, it's been doing good. It's running right around 450, 500 watts, doing pretty well. We are back to 20 degrees Celsius in the garage. So coming right down to temperature, I'll probably let it go another half hour, maybe 40 minutes, just see how cool we can get the garage and we will start to wrap up the video. All right guys, well I've been working away in the garage for the last 15, 20 minutes. I actually uh, am repurposing some wire here. I had a welder plug out here, but uh, I might as well spill the beans on it now. I ended up buying a 6000 XP and the Indoor Power Pro battery setup. So they are on the way, they're back ordered. They're gonna be a little while. So I'm getting things prepped. Gonna be using that wire for something else, but just been working away on it. AC is working great. It's actually a little bit cold in here at the moment, sitting right across from the louvers of the Eco Solaris heat pump. Things are still sitting around 20 degrees, so working perfectly, doing everything that it should be doing, running on solar. It's actually getting a little bit hot out now. The sun came out to stay, so things are working good. Uh, all in all, unit works great so far, no surprises. Ran nicely on solar. In the next video, I'm probably gonna be putting it on 240. Got a couple other videos planned for it, so if you have any questions about this unit or anything you want to see, uh, see me check on this unit, leave it in the comments below. I'll have the links to the website, all that stuff, if you want to check it out. So once again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.